Today we are chatting with Emily Oster. Emily, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here. I'm such a big fan. Uh, we're excited. When we saw that you, uh, so it's kind of, we don't meet all our guests this way, uh -huh. but you popped into our stories <laughs> and you suggested something that we were like, all right, this is awesome. And uh, we were pretty psyched. Uh, it's not too often that we get a quasi-celebrity to uh, pipe up and request to do the check-ins. I'm excited. I got to think about it. I was asking my daughter what I should do for check-ins. We'll All right. How old's your daughter? 12. All right. So same age as Henry, my, my youngest. It's a, it's a good age. I mean, you know, it's not easy. Mm -mm. Not do you easy. remember being 12? 12? Yeah, uh, it was 12? horrible, right? Yeah. yeah 12's not yeah. a good one. No, she's, like, I would say her experience is far better than mine. I mean, I remember when I was 12, everyone was like just so mean. And I don't know. She goes to like a Quaker school. Maybe they're just like so nice because it's Quakers. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It's like Canadians. I think 12 right. is when I got braces and it was just like that really awkward, like uncomfortable. Yeah. 12 was hard. It's purgatory. It's like right between childhood and teenhood. There's like part of you is going towards teen. Part of you is staying yeah, a it's kid. Just, it's the worst. It's really bad. My son is eight. That's like a very nice. Eight's like. That's like everything is great. Nothing yeah. phases him, you know. Just Eight like, is peak childhood. <laughs> exactly, and then that's it's just, the best. You know, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> downhill from there. <laughs> then, you, then you start all over. That's the worst thing about like life at that age is like you make it like you're like, ooh, I'm gonna be a, a sixth grader, and then I'm at the top, and then they put you in with the seventh and eighth graders, and you're like, okay, you're back at the bottom. You make right. it to eighth grade, you're like, I'm at the top. <laughs> then they put you in with the high school kids. Yeah, it's terrible. What a ride. Yeah. Um, okay, Emily, how did you find us? First of all, very curious about that. Maybe Allie. I, th Keller. I thought maybe that. Yeah. That would be my best guess. Okay. Yeah. She's like our biggest uh, marketing asset. She's like the gateway, the gateway hired. drug or something. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, you know what it's like when you listen to music and you find a band you like? And then that band is like, oh, if you like that band, <laughs> check out this band. And you're like, oh, okay. And then you get it, into this whole world. So I like, I love the drop and I have to say it's like hard, I find it hard to explain to people. Like, it's like, I'm, my husband's like, what happens on this podcast? It's like, well, they're just talking. I was like, it's like when you're going on a long one's your friends and you don't have to say anything. And they're just like talking about whatever. Yeah. That's, that's pretty much it. I'm still, I like, I, I get it when you're saying it, but I'm still, every time we sit down and record, I'm like, no one's gonna listen to this. No one is ever gonna listen to this ever. So I'm still shocked. Pretty much how we started the podcast. Yeah. <laughs> like, just, why would yeah. anybody listen to this? <laughs> but it's so good because you just like, you got to have, I don't know. It's just great. I like it. All right. So let's talk a little bit about, I want to talk about your running, definitely. Um, but let's talk a little bit about what you do. So parentdata.org, you are the CEO and founder. Tell us all about that. Yeah, so I'm an economist, um, so I have like a few different jobs. Uh, one is that I'm a professor at Brown University and I teach things about economics, uh, but then I run a parenting data website in which I write about data and, uh, and try to help parents use data to make better decisions. Um, like sometimes it covers pregnancy, sometimes it covers parenting, sometimes it covers running, um, but the kind of core is thinking about data and evidence and how we can bring that to bear on decisions that we make in our lives, basically. So less Dr. Spock and, and more like analytical? Like the questions that you would ask Dr. Spock, but like with analytical. So like I, I, questions like what's, what's a normal color for your baby's poop? Right. And like mm. you could ask Dr. Spock that and he would sort of give you the answer and I would give you the answer. But like if a graph, which is like here is like the share of time that baby's poop is these different colors. And that's an example of the kind of data that I'm providing for the world. Wow. <laughs> and you could take that to Home Depot and paint a room. <laughs> and totally. Exactly. And in that way, you know, if it gets on the walls, you'll be like matched. <laughs> we got it. Um, how did you end up as an economist? Like, were you always very analytical growing up? My parents are economists, okay. um, which is perhaps some good background. And so then, I don't know, I guess, I mean, I, I was always very analytical. I really like research and data and evidence. And I like the kind of approach that economists take. But I think part of the answer is just, I knew that that was a job that one could have because like my parents had that 
My parents had that So job. it's like a Nepo baby. Yeah, my husband is also an economist, actually. Oh, wow. So I'm hoping my children will become something else. That's crazy. So, like, one of the things that I think makes for, like, Megan and I work together. Yes. And, yeah, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> but she's very analytical and probably thinks more like an e- economist than I do. As a matter of fact, I'm not even sure what an economist does. <laughs> I, you, know, you might have to explain that one to me in layman's terms. Uh, but I know that Megan is more on that side of the fence, and I am more emotional and, like, creativity. That side is the part where I own. So as a partnership, I'm able to lean on her for stuff. If you guys are both economists, is it just like, like, tell me about that. Yeah. It, it's pretty <laughs> much just like you think. Um, you know, it's, it's, there's a lot of just, it's very, my house is very analytical. There's a lot of like, let's have a Google doc for this. Like, let's have an, oh, I was wow. telling somebody on my team last night, that I was going to put something on our date night agenda. And they were like, ha And I was like, no, actually, like, Seriously. in like on the date night, like calendar invite, there's like a little agenda where you can like add things. That's oh, my what. God. So that's cool. <laughs> so I'm guessing when you guys. Go I don't to know what the- Meg's face. I'm not sure how to interpret Meg's face. No, this is like this. She is would inc- love this. this is incredible. Is I'm like, yes, there's a calendar. Because if I I just bring up stuff like we went out for our anniversary recently and I just bring up stuff. Meg's like, I don't want to talk about that. I would have known if we had put it on the Google Docs that she would have been like, mm-mm, mm-mm strike cross through. Cross it out. Take but, it out the agenda. So I'm guessing going on vacation at your house, there's like, do you guys love, what's that storage company that you can go to and get all the different bins and stuff? Ikea? The no. container store? Yeah, the container oh. store. Oh. Do you guys pack like that? Like is like everything? Um, I do use packing cubes. Do you use packing cubes? Yes. yes. I love packing. Life-changing. Cat packing cubes are like the, but everyone uses packing. I mean, that's just uh, no, like, this is new to us. What? Yeah, this is new. Yeah, oh, I love. Oh my gosh, packing cubes are like. Whew. I, I will say okay. you, you are correct there, and I normally I'm like, eh, you don't need to plan, but packing <laughs> cubes really packing nice. Cubes. Yeah, that's yeah. a good item. All right, so yeah, so for me, like I think of economists, I think there's a magazine, I know that, yeah. and I think, but I start thinking of they're the people that probably help. Uh, financial advisors and uh, investment bankers choose like they're they're forecasting stuff. Am I close? Sure, that is a class of economists. Um, there there are many people who are trained as economists who work on that. Um, I don't do any. My work is nothing like that. So there is also a class of economists, which is sort of where I am, who try to use data to think about behavior and policy. So a lot of my academic work it asks questions like why don't people um, change their diet when they get a like disease diagnosis that's like a question i'm interested in is like when people are diagnosed with diabetes do they actually change how they eat and like why not Mm. and i use data to try to figure that out like so that has nothing to do with money it doesn't really yeah i it's like i i am pretty far in the fringes partly because like i also write books for lay people about pregnancy and parenting, which is pretty far outside of economics. But there is a whole like it's a it's a broader field than you would imagine when you're thinking about like the guys on the trading floor and like trading places or whatever, like the yeah. movies that are like in your head. <laughs> I'm not like those guys. Yeah, what, was the, what was the name of the I, I, I won't go down that rabbit hole, but somebody tell us what the name of that firm was. Um, you're, but so your main focus is like parenting and yeah. Okay, and but you d- just brought up like nutrition data, so yeah. So my a- like my my academic a lot of my academic work is about food. Food actually okay. is about like he- sort of health economics, and particularly has a fair amount of I, don't know, I do a fair amount of work about about diet stuff. Um, and then in my like parenting work, some of what I try to do is help people understand the difference between correlation and causality. So when we see something like, and nutrition is a good example here. Um, so we see something like, you know, coffee makes you live forever. Like what's wrong with the evidence that says like coffee is good for you or coffee is bad for you? And the answer is like, what's wrong is like the kinds of people who drink coffee are different from other kinds of people. Um, and so I, I spend a lot of time trying to explain p- to people the problems with studies like that, which come up in pregnancy, they come up in parenting, they come up in nutrition also. I love your uh, take on alcohol. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, uh, so there, I think it's very clear 
that at excessive amounts of drinking, that is bad. I also think most of the evidence we have that would say like occasional drink, like you'll occasionally see these people who say, well, there's like zero is the right number and any small amount, of, that is not well supported by data. The evidence in suggesting that, you know, having a drink every day is in some way like bad for you, that's not very good evidence. Um, there's too much, uh, too much, cor too much correlation, not enough causation. People who drink are different than people who don't. There's no randomized trials yeah. of that. I mean, basically to sum it up, that right now if you look at the chemical content, you say, yeah, alcohol is not necessarily a great chemical to be sticking yeah. in your body. However, if you look at some of the psychological benefits in moderation, yeah. that I, it can be beneficial. I think that's, uh, yeah. I mean, I think that's, that's one way to put it. I think another way I would put it is like, I don't think that there is any, I wouldn't go out and say like, this is good for you. Mm -hmm. I don't think there's a lot of evidence that it's good for you. You know, people say red wine makes you live forever. Like, no, that's just because rich people drink red wine. <laughs> like, under, it's like, I feel like the, the fancier the wine, you'd be like, oh, wow, if it's like a French. So you malt know, liquor is not going to help <laughs> like you. It's longer. not helping you. You know, but that's not, I don't think it's good. But on the other hand, like, is that why you like enjoy like a beer on the weekend like is that are you doing it like so are we doing all things just to be healthier like yeah. no some choices we make are also about enjoyment well that's what i love about it because i think you you look at right now we all want simple answers and simple solutions yeah. and if you look at the reason why maybe somebody like obviously if you're having beers every day and drinking every day you, you, it's probably not good for you good but if it helps you bond with a group of friends over a football game that you have nothing to talk about <laughs> other than football, <laughs> and you, now you have friends, that's good for that's you. That's good, exactly. No, I mean, I think we like, we, you know, you can take such a siloed, like, kind of narrow view of some of these, uh, some of these things, which just, like, we don't live in a vacuum. I mean, it's like, the, it's like the kind of the, the idea of like eating fewer, cal like eating no calories as like a health, you know, these guys who like to eat like nothing, you know, the just fasting, like, yeah, the fa intermittent like, fasting, not, not even the intermittent fasting, they're just the people who are like you, your whole life, you should live on 700 calories a day because like some mice do that. And that's like good for them. And that actually misses a lot about like why we're living as people, you know, yeah. like you'd like to well, enjoy. Yeah. It's gotta be exciting for you then when you figure out a different angle on like something that's kind of like an aha moment, like, I'm guessing that w even with the parenting uh, piece is that you're like, okay, they've for, for ages we've looked at parenting this way, but we're not taking into account these other factors. And when you figure out that, is it kind of like unlocking a puzzle? It, a little bit. I mean, I think at, at, so that's what I like about my own research. Like that's what's special about like when you are being an academic and you like write papers is like there's a moment when you've like figured something out and other people don't know it and like that's cool. Um, the other piece of, of a lot of what I do now is interpret other people's papers. And the reality is like, sometimes those are great. And you'll be like, wow, it's amazing. Someone was able to do this study. It's like so informative. I learned so much from it. Um, that's pretty rare, much more frequently. I'm like, wow, this study is definitely wrong. Like, let me try to dive in and figure out like how I know that it's wrong. And it's usually like appendix stable two. you like get in, you're like, oh, that's, that's what's the problem. And that's mm. also kind of fun. What do you think is the biggest myth in nutrition? The idea that there is a, that there are some kind of superfoods that we have evidence make us, give us powers or like, there's so much in the way of saying like, this is the specific way to eat, you know, this food, these blueberries, if you mix the blueberries with the chia seeds, you know, and you like put it in the blender with the spinach and you add this whey powder, like somehow like you'll live forever. You know, like, I don't think yeah. we have no evidence to suggest that any individual food like that would have any particularly special power. So the blue zone thing is bullshit. That's bullshit. I mean, <laughs> it's just bullshit. That's my paper on it. See, that's bullshit, how I yeah. win. Defending stable too. That's bullshit. Yeah. <laughs> Would I get into brown with that? Yeah, totally. That's a great <laughs> essay. That's a cool. great essay. Be like, finally, a paper I can get through before my coffee is done. Oh yeah.
Okay, so knowing you have all of this um, academic background in nutrition, I'm very curious as to why and when you would work with Megan Featherston. So I I love Megan. Um, Fair. And so I am tra- I'm training uh, for my first marathon. Um, okay. And I was going to work – uh, so I was going to work with Megan um, with the sort of intention of like figuring out marathon nutrition, which is its own sort of specific thing. Sure. Um, you know, how much do you, the, the gels and the salt and the this, that, and the other thing. And then like, I just, at some point I realized that like whatever I was doing in my normal nutrition was like not going great um, because well, I mean, this is a podcast for runners. Basically, I needed a lot of porta potties while I was like every time I would go run, oh, I, it would man. be like, and it was just like, and I'm not like I don't have Crohn's. I don't. It's just like I was just, like something was not right. And the combination of that and just like at ten o'clock in the morning every day, I was like, I'm so hungry. I'm gonna like eat my arm off. Um, and so anyway, that all seems. So I like ran her. I knew her, and I was like, you know, maybe we could work on this basic nutrition stuff now and try to get this like pooping thing under control um so then when we go into the marathon build we can like focus on that and so uh I don't know I just I like her energy I like her vibe she says a lot of things about science uh, yeah. which I think are ba- are basically which I, I know to be correct and so that seemed like a good fit people who get yeah. GI issues and have to use porta potties I don't even understand why they run like if I, if that happened the first couple times to me, I'd be like, hey, running is not for me. So I applaud you on getting past the potty. Like it's, that must yeah, be the I, first level. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not it it's not the best experience, I guess. Not the best. But you fixed it, right? But I fixed it. Yeah. No, it totally. Yeah. I totally fixed it. I mean, one of the things we learned was like I can't eat cutting cheese. out cheese steaks. Yeah, just yeah. cheese. Cheese. <laughs> no, okay, Basically, it's cheese. like. <laughs> It turns out, like, I really don't tolerate cheese, and that was, like, a major dietary component. And so, like, cu- like not eating, like, lettuce and, we learned, like, lettuce and cheese is not lunch. Um, uh, that was an important realization. That's weird because we, before working with Megan, we were salad lunch people. Yeah. And we were dying. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I think, like, the salad lunch, the, like, the biggest thing, she was just like, that's not lunch. Like, yeah. your lunch should, like, be heavy. You yeah. should pick it up and be like, this is like a heavy, like a heavy bowl of items. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, I don't know. Was was that a hard change for you? Or are you just like totally like, this is what I have to do. Good to go. No, I found it. I, I found it quite, I find it like quite jarring. Um, mm. And it's like, yeah, I mean, I. You're, you're a runner like you sort of think like that you kind of think when someone's giving you dietary advice about your running performance it's mostly going to be like eat less uh-huh. you know or like some yeah. version of eat less and the fact that it was just like no like you're like eat more like yeah. you put more rice in here like there's not a, more blender muffins have a second <laughs> you know but what has been 12 bagels <laughs> exactly it's just like she's like i didn't see enough why aren't you didn't you eat more tortillas today <laughs> just be like i'm so full of tortillas already <laughs> But what, what like I like I cannot argue with success. Like it's it really works. Like it really works. Yeah. Like my performance is totally different than it was, and and I can tell when I mess it up that like then it's like oh I like I didn't eat enough and like I feel like, like garbage. All right, Megan Featherston, welcome to the uh, getting a free ad here. <laughs> yeah, no, I mean she's no. like you know like she's great. Yeah. She's great, so Dennis. one last thing before that, you must be a dream client because I'm going to guess with all your analytical ways and your Google spreadsheets, you probably <laughs> follow like her advice, like not just kind of like, oh, I'll kind of do this. You probably have it down like this is what it's going to be. So I don't. I'm so curious what you guys think, like how you guys felt about the tracking, the, the like so. I have in the in the past done like very detailed like you know in sort of like as a diet like very detailed food tracking and I don't like it it like stresses me out the version of this that works that has worked for me with Megan is just like it's like it's not like this is exactly how much it's just like here is the kind of class of things that I ate and like that's I find that useful because I can look back and be like okay mm-hmm. here is where I like I needed to add more snacks or like this thing did not work, um, but I don't like the detail. Like the details are too. It's like it stresses me out, details, and it's yeah. it's ineffective. 
He, he says he hates the details. He didn't even track at all. Like there was no <laughs> tracking. Did you know, it's like kind. what any de- any information yeah. at all is too many details for Thomas. <laughs> yeah. Actually, here's what I like about it. So Feathers knows that that's how I operate. So she kind of gives me loose guidelines. And then I, because we talk to her every week, because we do the podcast, I, I've kind of figured out for me, okay, if I'm running this many miles, just add a little more. Like if I, if I'm not running that many miles, don't eat as much. Like, so I've kind of gotten to the point where I kind of know it also helps that this Megan is yeah. creating a <laughs> lot of the in meals. your house. I mean, this is like yeah. a total cheat. You're like live in a <laughs> house with a person who's like really like an excellent runner and being very careful and thoughtful about nutrition. And then, you know, I just, I mean, I just don't I just do, I just do, 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 do anything. <laughs> but that goes back to your studies because that is a factor Totally. In my success that most no, I always have. I mean, the, the thing that that I think about all the time when I'm trying to explain to people like why it's hard to understand why it's hard to link any particular food or any particular behavior to health is I talk about my dad. So my dad is like he just today is his 81st birthday and I get on happy the phone birthday, with him. happy birthday. And he's in really good shape. And I get on the phone with him today. And the first thing he says is like, you know, well, I ran nine miles yesterday and like, I'm getting faster. You know, I think what? I'm getting ready. Yeah. He's like, we're going to running like the base state half marathon. And like, like, Oh, guess, we like, know somebody's running the full. Yeah. That's the 15th of October or something. Yeah. And so he's just like trying to get, you know, trying to get his times, his times down. Okay. So, but like, he, like, so this is like, okay, this is a very, now, and he also does all the other things. You know, he's taking the chia seeds. He's got the, he's making the weird blender smoothie. You know, he's eating, it's like, so, but you're going to look at somebody like that and be like, and be like, look, chia seeds. They're like the key to longevity, but he's doing everything. He's not just having right. chia seeds. He doesn't smoke. He runs. He like thinks about this all the time. And so I think it's just really hard to separate like any particular behavior, particularly as you get into like these kind of esoteric foods to say that somehow that's the that's the thing okay so first off i applaud your father because 81 and running a half half marathon marathon? is sick and i'm kind of curious like how in shape is this guy is he like carnival strong no he's not and he's not that fast um i think it's just you know he has i grew up in new haven this is like i grew up in new haven and they have a there's a 20k in new haven it's like the 20k national championships is new haven so this is like a like he is like on the he's been like on the organizing committee for this for like it's been going on for 4000 years, you know, and so he is one of a small number of people who has run almost every race. Um, and like one of his great regrets in life is he has missed like maybe two, like once he like had knee surgery and once he was sick. And so he can't be if you've done all of them, they call you a streaker. <laughs> <laughs> and so then at the beginning of the race, they'll announce to be like, okay, and like, we got to celebrate all the streakers. <laughs> My husband's always like, what's going on here? Like, what is wrong with this race? Anyway, so he's really, he always like trains for the 20K. And that's his. I mean, I feel like they should let you let him in. I mean, if you'd use paper entry forms, you should yeah. be able to. You should be like, you're always able yeah. to do yeah. a streak. Exactly. <laughs> He's made his own safety pins. <laughs> I mean, you say not fast, but he's got to be fast for an 81 year old. I mean, how many? Yeah, he's doing like 14 minute there? miles or something. Like he's like, yeah. he's like, is yeah, he, that's. Is he yeah. winning like his age group? Usually, I mean, it's like a, there aren't that many people in. Those I was going to say that's how many are in his age group. That's what, yeah. That's my plan, though. Sooner or later, I will be the winner in the household. Right. Because, you know, if I can just you, keep going. You just keep going. Right. Yeah. I mean, she's, okay. Yeah. It's yeah. a long way to go, honestly, it sounds like, from listening. Okay. Yeah. Well, let's, let's hope Eventually. I can run when I'm 81. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you're running that with him? Is that what you said? I'm going to run, yeah. I mean, not with him. Well. Um, but it, in the, yes, we're going to go. I'm going to do that Same as a tune-up. Because I'm doing CIM. <laughs> and so I'm going to do that as like a tune-up. Okay, that was going to be my question. What was your marathon? CIM. So why'd you pick CIM? Um, So my coach is Caitlin Goodman, and that's like the race that she likes. And I got invited to give a talk in San Diego the next day. And so I figured I would like go and do that. A lot of people have mentioned that they don't think I'm going to be in great shape for my talk. The next day, um, you will be fine. But I think it'll be good. Fine. I'm not. You'll yeah, be good. You'll be fine. Yeah, it's fine. Uh, it, it's not that bad. And y- if you train properly, you'll be fine. You, you're Obviously, doing the you have a coach. Stuff. What a yeah. what a what's the speech you're giving? I don't know. I'm giving some academic seminar oh. about something. 
Okay. I, I thought love maybe it, it was totally running prepared. related. <laughs> no, it's not running. I mean, it could be. I don't know. I don't have a picture topic, but most of my, I, oh, I only do a little bit of, I don't do any running research. I only do. I think what's the toughest part of CIM is that you've got to train through Thanksgiving and mm -hmm. all of that stuff. So I don't know like what your family's like at Thanksgiving, but ours is a family that makes training, training very hard. <laughs> yeah. I, my family's, they're, they're all very into running. So I think like I will get some, you know, so I don't, I'm afraid I'm going to get sick, but. There's been all into running and you, cause you're going to eat a lot of cheese. <laughs> no, because my youngest brother has like three small children, and they're just like, oh, oh yeah, yeah like, that's like, like game over. Yeah, you're gonna have to wear yeah, a mask. I'm gonna have to wear a mask. I know. Yeah. So, uh, but your family's all into running. This is your first marathon. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what what made you make the jump to the marathon? The pandemic, like I basically during the pandemic, I sort of got my kids were like got were sort of old enough that I could be out more. And then I started just like running more because there was nothing else to like everyone else. Like, I mean, I ran before, but then I was like, OK, like there's nothing else to do. And then there was like a running club and I was like, I'm desperate to see other people. So I started running with them and I just kind of got more into it. And then I did some halves last year and I liked it. And I thought, I don't know, I think probably I like the half better, but we're going to yeah, I think it's like good to try. Yeah, I mean, the half would definitely... There's something fantastic about the marathon distance. But if you just want to be running, the half is, is <laughs> much more enjoyable. <laughs> I, I don't like... Like, the thing that makes me anxious about the marathon is, like, with the half, like, it, you know, particularly the last, like, the more recent training blocks, like, you over-distance, right? So, like, I know... Right. I'm, like, very confident. Like, I in my training runs of going 16 miles, like, I know I can do 13. The thing of, like you're preparing but never actually doing like i find that really freaky i find that really freaky but you got the taper beforehand so you're it, it all works right. out and totally fine. Well, it's all it, fine. there's just yeah. yeah there's something magical about that last like there is something especially if it's your first one there is something really special about that i'm going further than i've gone before and there, it, it's just a great feeling it's like every step is now pushing you towards that line and your yeah. goal. So that's pretty exciting. Do you have a goal for the marathon or are you just kind of like, let's I, just notch, I, notch the I belt? think just like, let's get it, you know, let's get it done. I mean, the, the, be, the Boston qualifying time for my, I will be like, this is like relevant for the 2025 Boston and like, yeah, I'm, I'll be 45. So it's like 350. And I think that's pretty, I don't know, my half, yeah, you should, my yeah. best half time yeah. from like last year is like 131. So I think, that seems yeah. Oh, yeah. pretty yeah. up. Yeah. I think it'll be fine. But, yeah. okay, so, but I'm trying not to have like more, you know. That's exciting. How analytical are you with running? What do you mean? What do you mean? Okay, I so like. Approach to it. Like, are you checking paces all the time? Are you like. Data. Yeah. Sheets. Using all your data. Are you like checking your sleep and making sure you have enough of that? Like how. No, I don't. I got one of those aura. Somebody sent me an aura ring and I okay. put it on and I was like, I'm going to check my sleep. And it just stressed me the fuck out. Because it was just like, it was always just like, your sleep is shitty. I know. Like, I'm, you know, and I like, I get a good, like, I'm like, I get like seven hours of sleep a night. Like, I go to sleep at the same time. Like, I have like good sleep hygiene, but I'm just not very good at sleeping. You know, I'm just a bad, I'm bad at sleeping. And I don't like to be like reminded of, of that. That was annoying. Um, and so I stopped, I stopped using that. And I would say like, you know, I have a watch. Like, Caitlin, like my coach sees the data. Mm -hmm. I look at it, but I would kind of like to just have her like, I'm, like, I, like, I don't know. I'm not interested in like finding out. I don't know. I'm not interested in analyzing my own data too much. I like that. I like it. I do. I'm kind of shocked. Like, I just feel like as someone with such an analytical mind that you would be looking at your half PR times, projecting your marathon times, like figuring out exactly what mileage you have to do. But that's yeah, not you. I I have a, it is like a space where I kind of just like the idea that someone else would tell me what, like, yeah. would tell me what to I do. Like and I that. also like, I trust Caitlin and mm -hmm. she's good. And she will tell me things I don't think I can do. Like, you know, she'll sort of like run these, like do this work. I'll be like, I, what? Um, but you know, but I like trust. I'm like, oh, I guess if she said like, that's okay. I guess I'll be able to like, I guess I can probably do that. That's what you're experiencing. And right then now. Would you, is that how you, you like, 
Exactly. Yeah, that's how my coach relationship is as well. But so you go out and you do them, right? And then you come back and you're like, yeah, I did you're that like, work yeah, out. I did Fine. That. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost always. That's pretty cool. Sometimes I will say that vomit. you you talked about the aura ring giving you stress. Uh, we have we use Coro watches and they have this app. And every once in a while, I just it's a regular non gender specific icon but i think it's a little old man and because he's hunched over and it says you are exhausted and i'm like this is not helpful this is not helpful there's a lot my- of things they're like i like you to watch it be like your training mode is unproductive yeah it's like, yeah why, why are you bothering me you know yeah you don't know what i'm up to things you don't know what i'm doing on yeah. my off time i'm not eating cheese <laughs> exactly. it's like i had so much a matter of fact dinner it, my guy is doing it right now yeah, you're at exhausted I don't know. level. I don't, you probably can't see him, but maybe, maybe you can. Oh, he's so he's so sad. I know he's bent over and he's hunched <laughs> over. It's like, yeah, yeah, you suck. And I'm like, yeah, yeah pretty much. That's bad. That's me. That's what a um, terrible exhausted man. Yeah. What are your thoughts on all that data, like that we're using not just as runners, but like everyday people that we kind of are inundated with data in almost all aspects of our life now? Do you think it's beneficial or no? I mean, I think that it is like people. People love navel gazing. Like people love to to navel gaze themselves, um, and I think for some people, this stuff can be quite helpful i think for most people it's a like it's irrelevant like it's not it is not in, i mean we are you are megan but like the you know i'm not tom's not like an elite athlete who is trying to like you, i'm sorry thomas <laughs> thomas is an elite <laughs> most people like me are not like trying to you know you don't need the like one percent right it's like we like that one percent isn't yeah. that important and so if we sort of think about some of these things as like this would be really beneficial if you're like Kipchoge and it's like every 0.1% is like the world, you know, a new world yeah. record. I'm not sure that for most people it's that valuable. I think it's good if it's motivating to get people to like, you know, because it sets a goal to get exercise or, or eat better. Of course, there's a, like another piece of that, which is people get sort of obsessive about these things in a way that yeah. is probably un, unhealthy. I feel like it's a double-edged sword because I think it does elevate your performance because you see other people's workouts and you're like, ooh, they're doing that. I feel like I could do that. Um, you know, Or maybe, hey, my friend that I always run with is hitting these new paces. I think I can up my game. Yeah. I think where the flip side of that is is that because we're looking at that data, it takes the joy out of our running because we're like, I am not hitting those paces or I'm not doing that. And and. There's a whole side of running that has nothing to do with how fast or slow or, you know, yeah. it, all, all that, that stuff. Like, uh, I'm guessing your, your father at, at his pace is not concerned with his, he probably has a time. Wait, he is. He says he's he is conservative faster. pace. It's the main thing is trying okay. to get faster. He's very conservative <laughs> spaces. All right, settle down yeah. then. <laughs> no, he's very, because that's how you get to be like that. So, no, wait, but so I mean. What, is he running with a like a regular a GPS watch? Like yeah. how's he? He's on Strava. Okay. I'm like I am on Strava. I can like see what he's. Holy see cow! What he's doing on Wait, Strava. are you, so you're on Strava? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you you said during the pandemic you joined a run group. I did. Like you just are you an extrovert and you just went out and you're like here we go. No, it like I'm not an extrovert. Um, and actually, like it was just like the pandemic was awful. And like I was, you know, just running a lot because like there, I don't know, there was nothing to do. And then one day, like pretty early on, maybe like a- April or May of 2020, I like ran by this group of people that were like, st- yeah, I don't know, standing outside the JCC in Providence, and like they seemed to be running together. And then I was just like, oh my god, other people! Like I'm like on the internet, <laughs> like how do I find out about this? And it was like this thing called the Ronald McDonald Run Club, which has existed in Providence for forever. Um, and they were doing like tempo runs, um, on, you know, two, like twice a week, um, you know, just to like see other people. And so I ran with them for a, a while, just really because it was like nice to meet other people and be yeah. with other people. And, and now I mostly run alone, although I'll, you know, I have a few like running friends that I'll bother so let, let me let me cross over two worlds for you here. 
So you do stuff with kids and, and helping parents figure out and navigate raising children. And you have a running habit. I don't know about you, but I, when the boys were young, I tried to get them involved in running and quickly learned that it wasn't their passion like it was mine. And I didn't want to push them, and I, I didn't want them to resent running, so I pulled back pretty quick um, of, like, just I, I didn't want to be that dad that's like, you're going to run. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. So I'm, I would love for them to get into it, and I don't know how to foster that, or it, it, did I do the right thing and just let them find their own? I, I guess that's more parenting yeah. advice. It's probably not the same thing as an economist that would. No, no, that's it. this is exactly this is exactly what my job okay. is. My main okay. my main job is I have I have specific advice here. Um, so I basically I think you do the right thing when we look at extracurriculars and like what what is the benefit of extracurriculars. I think a lot of people think about them as like this is my opportunity for my kid to like. Get, get a scholarship or like, you know, go to the Olympics or whatever. But like your kid's not going to the Olympics. Or just hang out with me. <laughs> <laughs> or just hang out with you. Um, but really, like the value of extracurriculars for, for kids is the, the sort of so, sense of social belonging. And it's like an opportunity to do something that they like and that maybe is a different set of set of social connections than they would have inside school. And we see it sort of protective of like mental health. If kids, you know, they're struggling in one domain, it can be nice to be excelling in another domain. In order to get those benefits though, the extracurricular actually has to be something that the kid like enjoys, feels connected to, is not that they have to be good at it, but they need to feel like a sense of confidence in it. Um, and if your kid doesn't like running, then like forcing them to run is definitely not gonna deliver that. So I think you made the right, I think you made the right choice. All right, yeah. there you go. But I, my kid, my older one runs cross country, and I'm like, like, I'm very, like, I am a very competitive person. Like, uh, like on all, there are no things that I don't like want to win. You know what I mean? Like, not that I do win, but like, like if there's like, one parking spot available, you're racing to <laughs> exactly. it. Exactly. Like I okay. just like, and then you, you, no you... matter what the domain is, like I will like, you know. And she is a she is competitive about only one thing, which is the violin. She's like really into the violin. She like really cares about doing a great job, whatever. She is not a comp like competitive about running. And so she's like fine, but I'm sure she could be better if she were like pushing herself more. But she's like, people say it should be fun. And I'm gonna be like, it should be <laughs> fun, but also <laughs> like too fun. Did you it's only fun if you win. Like, <laughs> like, you know what's really fun is get, catching people in the lab. I'm just saying, when you catch a few of them in the last few hundred meters, that's fun. That's a kind of fun. Yeah. Stepping on the back of their heel, knocking exactly. their shoe off. Just Lots like, of fun. Throw a few elbows, you know? It's like, that's fun. That's fun. Uh, How do you get a kid into violin? That seems like the hardest instrument. This is the thing. To... She chose it. She chose it herself. She told us when she was like five. She was like, "I want to play the violin." Wait, did like, you have a lot of nowhere? violins hanging out? I, I guess that she saw some. We don't have a lot of violins. I <laughs> cannot play the violin. Yo Yo Ma in the neighborhood. <laughs> I think she saw an older kid with a violin case that had some cool stickers on it, and mm. was like, "I gotta have that shit." I'll but, do uh, it. But then it turned out she actually really likes it, so she's just like. She's like really into the violin. Now, I have to say it. You must have patience or headphones like you're wearing now for a kid to learn violin. <laughs> the first three years were torture. Three years? It's a long, I mean, maybe not quite three years, but like. It's a hard instrument. It's, it's not like that. So my the younger kid plays the piano and the piano, like basically after one lesson, it's like, okay. You, when you three hit the keys, mice. they make the noise, you know, three blind mice, like we're there. And it never, it's not like it sounds amazing, but it like, you're not like, I'm going to die. You know, it's not like, it's not like my ears are going to fall off. The violin, it's like for months, all they're doing is like learning how to stand and playing like a crunkly Screech. like thing on one string. It's like, ee, 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 ee. <laughs> And they're like, oh, do that for, and then she's like, you better practice for 15 minutes a day. That's the only activity. So it's just 15, yeah. ee, ee, for 15 minutes. But now she's like really good. And so it's like, it's like lovely and like wonderful to listen mm. to her. But uh, it was a slog. Wait, uh, was this three years of learning also overlapping the pandemic? Oh, no. 
No, no, for sure. <laughs> By the time we got to the pandemic, she was a bit better. So. Okay. okay. I will tell you, though, like you would, for me, maybe be a little bit of a nightmare uh parent friend mm-hmm. because you'd oh, be like hey my okay. daughter's got <laughs> my daughter's got a recital do you want to come to my daughter's recital and i'd feel bad because i'd be like no i don't <laughs> no i don't uh we i would not invite you to my daughter's recital so right. don't worry like <laughs> i go. yeah there's oh, some man. parents that i've been invited to many things that i have ended up going and it's, it's yeah. yeah kids violin recitals you know you got to sit through a lot of the EEE kids before you get to, you know, the small number of people who are able to play the violin. On the flip side, though, like when she gets into uh, Harvard on scholarship for, uh, you know, music or whatever, you're going to be a proud parent and you're going to wear tuxedos around a lot. (laughs) Tuxedos. Yeah, that's what you do. Okay. Like Is that you what you a, do? Yeah. I actually yeah, went to have, Harvard and there are very few tuxedos well, there. But that's because maybe you now probably didn't go there for violin. Maybe I didn't go there. go there for violin. That's actually, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's a good plan. Yeah. Have you been to that lampoon area? Uh, yes. Yeah. With that's the pretty tuxedo. cool. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Okay, so are you the parent when she's playing uh, or she's running cross country? Are you screaming on the sidelines? Totally. Even though she's having fun? Okay. Absolutely. Yeah. No, I try to hold it together and not, and just say good job and not, you know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. I totally. My husband Do thinks it's great. Colors? But she asked me to, like, no, no, it's not, I don't even know what they are. Um, it's, That's but bad my, my husband was like, <laughs> Do you, she had asked me to come. She was like, Can you come to every meet? And I was like, Fuck yeah, I'll be at every meet. Like, I totally, it's like my dream. And my husband is just like, what do you do at the meet? Like, it's not a game. And I was like, well, if you're a real cross-country parent, you, like, run around the course so you can see yeah. them at, like, multiple places. And he was just like, you're it's insane. <laughs> like, this oh, is I guess that that's a question. Does your husband run? Like, I, for exercise, like, twice a week, three times a week, very slowly. All right. Not as what slow as he... my dad, but, like, pretty slow. <laughs> <laughs> what? They can run together. What does, um, what does he think about your running? He thinks it's really stupid. I think it's probably like, I mean, he's like, he's, he is like, I think he would describe it. He would say this true. He's like practically very supportive in the sense that he will like, you know, like there's some amount of time that is taken up by, sure. by this. And he's like very nice about like allowing that to, to be true, but he's emotionally completely unsupportive and <laughs> th- thinks the whole thing is really stupid. And is never like impressed with it. So I usually will send him like if I'm like this is a really good workout, and and I'll like I'll like oh. WhatsApp him like a little picture, and he's always just like okay, <laughs> like I don't know what that means. Well, that's a t- we care so much about these splits and the times and everything like that. P- we have a very small crowd that we surround yeah. ourselves with that yeah. care about that. The rest of the world, like I, no. I'm getting my hair cut the other day, and I'm talking to the woman who's uh, cutting my hair, the barber. And uh, I'm like, she's like, what are you doing this weekend? I'm like, I'm going to Chicago. My wife is, you know, pretty good runner. I'm going to go cheer her on as she does this stuff. How many miles is that? I'm like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, like, so I mean, I feel like I get a lot of, that. I have like good, like Instagram, you know, I have like good running friends who will be like, that's awesome, you know, and, uh, and so I, I get a fair amount of that kind of validation, but he's just like, he couldn't, he couldn't get, but we did actually, it's the first time this ever happened. So he also swims occasionally, like three days. He's also, I would say pretty slow at doing that. And the other day we were in, I mean, I'm just saying the other day we were in, like, I needed to do some cross training. And so we're in the pool together and we're like swimming next to each other. Uh And like, I don't swim very frequently, but like, like I run, you know, like I'm in really good aerobic shape. I know how to swim. And so afterwards he was like, you're really fast. It was like, I couldn't, he was like, I tried to keep up. And like, I, I couldn't keep up. And I was like, Okay. Yeah. Like, so, so that was like the only that's the most impressed he's ever been. <laughs> nice. The, the nice. reason Megan's laughing over here is we decided to do uh, a half Ironman. So at, oh. I had already done one. So I went to the pool. I was doing the swimming, all that stuff. So Megan's coming out for her first couple of swims. And I'm like, all right, let me just show you the ropes. You know, you don't have to worry about it. And chick was lapping me like within like. <laughs> 
uh, I don't even, it was probably like the first couple left. And she's just like a natural in the water, of course. And, and it's, I mean, it's fitness, you know, it's fitness. I mean, it's yeah. like, if you don't like your form is okay. And it's just right. aerobic fitness. It's just like, yeah. that's, that's it. All right. But Megan does her first half marathon and ends up like, Ironman? yeah, half whatever. Ironman. Yeah. yeah. Half Ironman. And you came out of the water like as fast as like people that swam in college. Like it was, I, it was just because I thought I was going to drown. Honestly, yeah, <laughs> I was like trying to get there. To get there. It's like it's like how yeah. fast I go when I'm trying to do the porta potty. It's like at the end. Yeah, there you like, go. I gotta Same put, thing. Like, I gotta Five get, minute I gotta miles. Get there. I got to get there because you know can't have that. Can't have that. Um, how did you yeah. find Caitlin, your coach? Through Allie. Allie's like oh. my running gateway. Allie's okay. just like my running gateway drug. Like I somehow connected with her, and then she I don't know. She's just yeah. Like, is that how you found Megan too? Probably. That's amazing. She really is your no, connector she is. She's of all like things. A, she's she's great. She had me on her do podcast you, once, and then I do you guys know. live near each other? Mm, in, I mean, I guess in the sense that New Hampshire and Rhode Island are not are both on the East Coast. She's in Rhode Island. No, I I'm thought in she was Rhode in Island. Boston. I'm in oh. Rhode Island. Alex You're another Rhode Hampshire. Islander. We yeah. just the last person we um, interviewed was a pro from Rhode Erica Island. Kemp. Yeah. Ah, I love Erica. Yeah, do you see her out in the road? Yeah, chair? sometimes. Rhode Island's that. really small, so I go out to the, like, there's, like, one bike path, everybody, that all the, like, pros mm. really like, and Blackstone, and so I will go out there. I also live, like, four, four blocks from Emily, so, I, like, I never see Emily because she's, like, very focused, but I see Shane all the time. I see that's, Shane and that's the so, dogs. That's so funny because I asked Erica if she ever runs with Emily or sees Emily out in the run, and she had a very similar answer of, like, she's... She's like never to be seen. She's just out yeah, there I've running. Seen, I saw her w- once. I ran with Molly, and we ran into and we ran into Emily, but like with Molly Huddle. But like, it, yeah, Emily is like Emily is really focused. Wait, like, so you're just she, casually running with Molly, Molly Huddle? Huddle? Yeah, I she was injured, so we we like she ran with me a little bit. But uh, but it is uh, running with Molly Huddle is like a thing where like basically I I'm like I'm gonna die. You know, like I'm just running. I was like, basically, I'm at my absolute, like, more or less at my limit for this. And she's just like, casual. Do, do, do. <laughs> like, it's, you know, it's like how my husband feels about my swimming. It's like, yeah. you know, you're just like, what happened? I ran the Rhode Island Marathon four out of 10. In Providence? Yeah. What, what did you say about it? Four out of 10? F- four out of 10. Yeah, people don't like it. It's like not, yeah. it's like, it's a kind of a, yeah. That's it's why it's good that you're going out to California. Yeah, this is like, we talked about this. is like, there's something that that's like not a great, I don't know. No one, like afterwards, even before, no one knew that lived there knew that there was a marathon going on. Yeah, when we were there. Right. Uh, I was like, like, what are you here for? Interesting. <laughs> they shut down all the roads. Did yeah. you notice? <laughs> yeah, no, but there, the people don't, people probably just try to drive on them. Like, this is not, yeah. Rhode Island's not like a, yeah, that's not our, this is not our thing. We're not into that. You got a good art institute, though. It's a RISD? Yeah. That's yeah. a good place. That's a good place. Yeah. It's right down okay, the street. So I mean, Rhode Island's really little. It's like a tiny, it's like a tiny place. All the people. Artists don't need a lot of there. space. Yeah. Everybody. There's no football list. team. <laughs> That's true. What are you running in shoe-wise? Like, what's your daily trainer right now? New Balance. Um, fuel cell. S- SC Trainer? I'm going to ask you, like Allie knows, what color is it? <laughs> black. Oh, okay. So that's probably the SC Trainer 2. The black and two. green one. It's is like it, a it's, soft it's, green. T- no, it's totally black. I think it's the oh. one. And then I also have the, maybe it's like, it's, I don't know, guys. You're, this is the, you're the shoe people. Yeah. Okay. So it has a big white N on the side yes. outline. Okay. That's yeah. the SC Trainer 1. Okay. Okay. All right. I Race like day. It. What are we going with? Probably the like... New Balance Fuel Cell, Fuel Cell Elite, the like racing shoe version of that, yeah. but maybe the Saucony Endorphin Pro. Pro, but not the Endorphin Elite. Like they changed. There's like an Endorphin Pro Three, uh-huh. and then they went to the Elite. I cannot wear the Elite ones. Like there's something like wrong with the like not wrong, for, but like for my for the way that I run, I cannot make them work. Um, but I like the, I like the pros, but I'm worried that that there's too many miles in the, like, I'm worried that it will hurt my feet. Like they're too firm. Yeah. They're like, they're like poppier. I can tell they would be faster, but I am worried that like the last 10 K I will be like, my feet are 
dying. So I'm trying to figure out the balance. But you don't need your feet after that 10K. That was probably kind of what Caitlin said. She was basically yeah. like, if you feel like you're gonna, your feet are going to fall off at the end, that's fine. We have two weeks rest afterwards. So. Yeah. And all you have to do is stand up at a podium. Right. Well, in San Diego. I don't think we will be uh, standing at a podium. <laughs> Even better. Oh, oh to, yeah. It's just the front of the room, so it's fine. <laughs> uh, so that's my, yeah. So I like, I like the New Balance a lot. I have, like, quite wide feet. I have, like, giant bun- like bunions. Mm. You and Meg. Bunions. She so, can't see her hand raised. There's, there's so, we have so many similarities. Bunions on our feet. <laughs> very <laughs> analytical. Like, and so yeah. they're, like, the same, except you're, like, really, like, quite a lot faster. You're getting there. Yeah, all you have to do. 131 half, man? That is fast. That's faster than me, but you are probably our new. (laughs) (laughs) What was that? What was that race? That was in Cheshire last year, which is like a place in Connecticut near my dad. A lot Um, of cats. There are a lot of cats. It was raining. It was like, I feel like I could have gone under 130, but it was like, it like rained, like up to your ankles kind of like just like ridiculous, like puddle situation. What shoe did you wear for that? Those I wear the Salkinis for. Mm. So that is, that's kind of why I think I, I don't know, we'll see. Yeah. Okay, so going into that race, were you, did you have a goal in mind? Were you trying yeah, to break 130? Yeah, I wanted to go 130. Yeah. I mean, once I saw the weather, it seemed really, really unlikely. I find the, like, I don't know if you guys find this. Like, I find the return on the shoe is really affected by the wet. Like, it, like I don't think that the benefits that I'm getting from the super shoes are as good when it is wet. Um, well, if you're talking ankle deep water, I would have to agree with you for sure. <laughs> like, but yeah. I don't know about, uh, I don't know. What don't other, know. what other race shoes have you tried? I tried the Adidas. They're not wide enough. Like the, the, the pro three or whatever. And they were like, they, I, like they gave me like, like deep injuries on my butt. Like just like the placement of the bunion and the shoe was such that there were like, there was like a hole in my foot. Oh, for a while. Okay. That was not good. I had to switch away from those after that. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you should you you should get in touch with Megan because she's got the bunion friendly. Yeah, but I'm back yeah, in the you, what are you, Alpha what are you Fly what originals are you, that you, are not even available anymore. Uh, I tried thing. them. I tried the Alpha Flies when I first like tried the Super Shoot, and like it it felt like it was like a tiny like it was like squeezing my foot into like a teeny weeny. No, you don't find that. Well, no. So I I think I've just gotten used to it because I felt like the benefits of everything beneath my foot were worth shoving my foot into it. <laughs> I see. And so I was like, this is fine. I'll just let this happen. It's going to be I've great. I've convinced myself no now that they fit. And so that's where we are with that. Yeah. But are you so tempted to try the, uh, to try these things that, that there were, that she was wearing in Berlin? The like, do you have the like, yeah, I don't, what are they called? The Addy I Zero, Addy Pro. Uh, is it, is it like unbelievable? It is. It is. It really Adidas is. Adidas sent it to Thomas, not to me. And so not to you, because he, needs, I don't cause he get... needs it more. Because he needs it right. more. <laughs> well, I mean, I feel like that. I also feel like I have run in every single race day shoe from the dawn of history of pretty much man. So so have I. Plated shoes only came out a few years ago. Yeah. yeah. Anyway, so they what said do you they guys didn't have my size. Here, okay, so here's a data question. So what do you think yeah. is the percent? What do you think is the the percent benefit for the shoes. Well, here's where I'd say for like the for Evo super one. super shoes in general. Oh, super shoes? I think yeah. there's a non-quantifiable. Uh, no, but I, I I think every person is different, but I would say it falls between three to seven percent. Yeah. Yeah. But I think the non-quantifiable part is when you look down at your feet and you're like, I've got my race day shoes on. I've got my fast day shoes. I feel fast in these you are going to push a little harder. You are going to run a little faster. I'd, like, I was testing the Evo ones. I think that there is a benefit of having a lighter shoe. And mm-hmm. since it is so light and you still get all the benefits of, say, like what you get from a Vaporfly, I think there is a, a, a real benefit there, especially for the elites. But for me, I was doing like repeats to test the shoe and I was going by feel. Mm-hmm. But I also was like, I've got this new this crazy shoe on. Shoe. Somebody and has written my, 211 in it. Like, yeah. Right. So my paces were faster than I thought I was giving the effort for. So I was like, oh, cool. But I do think they, they've done studies on, on the shoes. And in some super shoes, and I'm not saying this is the Evo 1, but in some super shoes, people who have worse mechanics 
benefit yeah. more from yeah. the super shoe than an elite who maybe gets one or two extra percent out of yeah. a shoe. You can you could probably get like Megan was saying up to six seven percent. Yeah, I mean, I think that like I find that when you look in the in the data on some of these tests, what's interesting is how much heterogeneity there is, like how many differences there are across people, right? That just depending on probably some combination of your mechanics and just like what kind of st whatever striker you are in different ways. Mm -hmm. Like some people are getting a lot and some people are getting almost nothing. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it I definitely, know. I think the best thing that's come out of super shoes also is the recovery time after mm -hmm. marathon. Yeah. So like my first few marathons. That's why you'll be fine for the speed. That's why I'm yeah. going to be fine for the speed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's golden. You'd finish a mar marathon and your legs were just chewed up because you ran on, you know, paper thin shoes for 26 miles. And now, you finish up and you can train in, in a week or two weeks and feel pretty much fine. My husband runs in these um, shoes with the toes, the like Vibram thing. No, like, oh, Vibram, five finger. Oh, no. Uh, no. Yes. Did, I know, I know. He, it's like, he's like, I was like, you don't understand. We're done with those. Like, I, I know yeah. those were like cool 15 years ago or whenever. They were not. The first they weren't even cool they then. Were, they were always ridiculous looking, but at least yeah. there were people who were like, this is an interesting shoe to like yeah. engage with. But now it's like, you just look ridiculous. Like, you, it, like you're going to get a hurt. I don't know. It's just like, <laughs> but does it's so he, but stupid. Even that though, like, like when you look at him, in those shoes, is it is it hard? <laughs> just, when I see him run in the shoes, it's like I have uh, to look away. It's like it's a turn off, right? It makes you it makes you like run in this sort of weird like with kind of flip, tiny flip, flip, steps. Flip, 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 flip. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah. Just like <laughs> I'll, sometimes I'll run into him and like I'm coming back. We have like a I'll be like coming after my run. And he'll be going out. And I'll just be like, oh god. <laughs> Does he know this? Oh you know, yeah, yeah. The kids, the whole family is like basically oh, like, can you just get some regular shoes? Like he'll be like, I'm gonna walk you guys to school. The kids will be like, mm, oh, no, no. <laughs> not, not those. You won't. See, not those I shoes. Got, I sort of have respect for him because he knows everybody in his family <laughs> is embarrassed, and he's like, I'm, I'm doing this anyway. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But still. Yeah. Ugh. Do you give him like gifts? Or are you like, hey, look at, I got you these. <laughs> no, no, because no, I, he can buy, he can afford to buy them himself. I mean, I'm not going to get engaged with the like, no, I have not done that. Does he wear black socks with them? <laughs> he doesn't wear any socks with them. You don't put socks, you Perfect. just like, put, stick you can. So they oh, smell, right. they smell terrible, obviously. So you just don't um, just put them in the garbage. <laughs> I don't know, you just like throw them, you just like eventually, I guess you can wash them. He's like, I'm going to put those in my put those in my oh my gosh i think that megan megan what would happen if i was like i'm going barefoot uh, i don't know that would yeah. it would be hard to come back from that one yeah. i once at a at a race was passed by a guy wearing like not vibrams but he was wearing like sandals you know these people who like run in yeah. sandals yeah. like idiots. The yeah. and yeah. he was wearing sandals and a banana costume mm. and he that passed like you yeah. yeah i eventually i did get him later but uh that was like very demoralizing well, I was doing a trail race and a guy was wearing those sandals and he's doing okay. But then his sandal broke. <laughs> <laughs> he was on the side of the trail trying to fix his sandal. Did you laugh? Did you, did you laugh? Yeah, I'm like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. that's why you got shoes, bro. <laughs> that's why, you know, they came up with this amazing thing. It's got all this other stuff it covered your whole foot. It's unbelievable. Yeah. You, you can wear socks it. with it. Yeah. Uh, it's crazy. Um, okay, I know we're coming up on the hour mark here, so I don't want to take too much more of your time, but I did want to ask you about social media. So you have 300,000 plus followers on Instagram. Yes. You purchased 300,000. <laughs> yeah, no, it's the Russian troll market. Yeah. It's really active. What's, what's, your, what's your thought on social media overall? Are you super analytical about that? Like, are you trying to figure out the algorithm or is that just a place like for you to spread knowledge? What do you use it for? So... Uh, so I mainly use it to support parent data. Like it's okay. a, it's a work, it's a work activity, um, which means we try to be pretty analytical about it the same way I try to be pretty analytical about my, you know, whatever about the other aspects of, of, uh, of work. Um, I find it's very difficult to like figure out the algorithm. And so in the end, like in practice, kind of what that means is we just like try different stuff and see what, uh, yeah. you know, see what people like I mean most of the most of what I do is focused on just like trying to answer people's questions and help people think about their pregnancy and parenting sometimes they're running stuff um but I don't uh I, like the hallmark of my social media usage is that I it's like 
pretty un like a lot of it's pretty unedited like I do a fair amount of just like recording stories like after I run or like and, and nobody like edits those I just post them that's why the captions are always really messed up <laughs> I think that's good though. You got to have a little bit of just the raw realness and then you've got all the analytical data to support it on the like, post side. Get up people. You got to, you know, you got to like try to hit the, try to hit the balance. Does it frustrate you So I have to all? post my running because my husband isn't supportive and so I need like, you need yeah. Strangers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I need the strangers on the internet to provide me with validation. I'm going to go on Strava after this and follow you and just give you a lot of kudos. Just give me kudos. So that, I just like yeah. that. I like the kudos. Yeah. And I, you know, I get that feeling especially because you're putting so much effort and work into your training right now. You're doing nutrition. You've got a coach. You've got that. It's 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 work. You want to you want to have a little positive reinforcement. Totally. No, and I I like and yeah. The other day, like I posted my long run, and then Emily Sisson was like, "This looks like a great long run," and I was like, "All right, hashtag then. famous." Yeah. It's like I think she yeah. I think she's running uh, Chicago. She, yeah, she is sure running. is. Yeah. She's gonna. I hope she's gonna win. Who's your Who's your you're, okay, so you think Emily over Emma Bates? I think so. But She's I mean, it's hard her. to That's tell because hometown. it's hard to, of course I have, of course I'm going to vote that because yeah. like Emily, I've, I, you know, Home I see team. Shane all the time and sure. I like them like, you know, so yes. But I mean, she, I saw her, like she looked really good at the 20K in New Haven. It's hard, yeah. it's hard to tell with Emma Bates though because she doesn't, she doesn't race except for marathons. Like, right. so it's hard to. I don't know. It's hard to judge fitness. It's going to be a fast day, I think, It's going to be a fast day. I'm so excited can, for can you. We, oh, my gosh. Can we I'm tell like... her what we're doing with Emma afterwards? Yeah. All right. So we came up with this idea when we saw her in Boulder to do a drunk marathon recap. Oh, my so God. That's Mar- amazing. Martini. It's amazing. Martini so it's marathon. happening. So we have Don't a, you have to get her a Modelo? Isn't she the one who likes the Modelo? Yeah, she, yeah that is. We'll get doing. that, but then we'll shake up the vodka. Yeah, um, because yeah, that's, yeah. you can't, you gotta have too many Modellos. You got to like, yeah, you know, yeah. You know, yeah. Balance that yeah. out for sure. Empty stomach after a marathon. Martini is <laughs> like, just oh, the thing you need. This is going to be good. Yeah. That's amazing. I love it. So, yeah, we're going to record a, a thing with her and Megan uh, That's really doing fun. that. Yeah. yeah. It's going to be a good race. It's going to be a really good race. All right, Emily, thank you so much for coming on our podcast. and well, She's also rooting for Emily. They got a, the same name. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Is that the yeah. real reason? Well, Emma she's is not, close also, right? I mean, yeah. it's like, it's basically, it's a good running name. But yeah. 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 You could jump ship if she wins. <laughs> Be like, we'll re-edit the podcast. You want to give two answers? <laughs> she's like, we'll come and back. We'll, we'll edit the podcast to match. Like, you'd be like, I knew Emma was going to win. <laughs> exactly. I'm totally committed. Totally committed. Um, if people are parents or are just interested in learning more about you, where should they go? Rhode they Island. They should go to par- Rhode Island, where I live. Uh, parentdata.org uh, is the best place to find me. Okay, what about Instagram? Oh, and Prof Emily Oster on Instagram. She probably and figures everybody's already Strava, following her. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. do have three hundred thousand. That's so pretty much everyone. Prof Emily Oster is also uh, is your Strava name? No, my Strava name is just my name. I think. Okay. I don't know that there's a way to. Sh- I'm sure there's a way. You to don't sh- throw the letters at the end. No, what letters? What? I don't what really I, know. I'm, sure I'm not good at Strava. I'm okay, not like but do you have? Auto, you know, I don't like. I know she's so fancy. Yeah, like, like they should I really hire. Morning run, everything. Morning run. Same. Same. Yeah, it's okay. Who I'll still time. give you kudos. Nice. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes if it's really bad, I'll be like, this was awful. <laughs> right. Because you have to justify the You have to justify. Like Laura Green <laughs> says, you have to explain yeah. that like, this is why it was very hot. I ate the wrong <laughs> thing. Like I was running with a slow person. <laughs> yeah. Running with my 81-year-old dad today. Okay, guys? Exactly. Relax. <laughs> running with my husband. Flip, 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 um, all right. Uh, what would you What would you rather have? <laughs> going to keep if, going. If your husband could be a uh, really fast runner, but he wore Vibram shoes to every <laughs> race, or he wore regular shoes and stayed at the same pace he is now. Oh, I definitely rather have him wear the regular shoes. I don't care that he's not a fast runner. I just find that the shoes are just they're off putting. <laughs> we had someone who used to bring him in the office. I felt like they look like an ape walking around. <laughs> yeah, totally. I mean, it's just, they're just ridiculous. They're ridiculous and they sound weird and they look weird and they affect your form and they make it's just like it's not a good this is not a good shoe situation. It's also hard to find them now because nobody wears them. So when he has to replace them because they smell, which is really frequent, he's just like, Where can I find these? And I'm like, I don't know. Try going to running warehouse and getting a regular shoe. Yeah. <laughs> Allow me to suggest a few. 
Yeah. Right. Yeah. You gotta. Right. You gotta work on that. You gotta work on that. You gotta work that's on that's that. a problem. It's a problem. <laughs> Um, okay, actually going to say goodbye now. Thank you again Thank for joining you. us. This was very fun. This is awesome. Thanks, guys.